The late last Shah of Iran, Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, had three marriages in his lifetime. Apart from his second queen, Saraya, who did not bear him any children, his first and third wives gave birth to a total of five children. Today, we will talk about the story of the first child of the Shah, Shahnaz Pahlavi. Shahnaz Pahlavi was born on October 27, 1940, in Tehran, Iran. She was the only child of Mohammad Reza Shah and his first wife, Fawzia, who was an Egyptian princess. Her birth was accompanied by great regret and unease within the Pahlavi family. Years ago, Mohammad Reza Shah's father, Reza Shah, had heard a prophecy that if the first child born to the royal family was a girl, the king would be killed or exiled. Obviously, this absurd prophecy eventually came true. Furthermore, before Shahnaz's birth, everyone in the court anticipated that Shah's wife would give birth to a male heir, and celebrations had been planned accordingly. However, all the planned festivities were cancelled when people learned that the queen had given birth to a baby girl. As a result, one can imagine the magnitude of disappointment within the Pahlavi family regarding Shahnaz's birth. Nonetheless, Shahnaz's father still felt some consolation in the birth of his daughter, as evident from the name he chose for her. Shahnaz means the king's pride. However, Shahnaz's birth made the situation even more difficult and awkward for her mother, Princess Fawzia, within the Pahlavi family. The entire family became increasingly unfriendly toward her, and her husband grew more indifferent. These circumstances took a toll on Fawzia's physical and mental health, leading her to develop severe depression. Eventually, unable to bear any more pain, Fawzia returned to her homeland of Egypt in May 1945 and filed for divorce from her husband. At that time, Shahnaz was only five years old. She was asked by her father to stay in Tehran until her mother returned. However, Fawzia's request for divorce initially did not receive approval from the Iranian side. Since Shahnaz's separation from her mother, she became a propaganda tool for her father and her aunt Ashraf. They covertly allowed certain media outlets, especially Iranian newspapers, and magazines, to publish photos and articles about Shahnaz. Shah tried various means to ensure that this information reached Fawzia, who was in Egypt and reluctant to return to Iran. He sought to spark her maternal instincts so that she would come back to him. Shah even attempted to persuade the Iranian ambassador to Egypt at that time to bring Fawzia back to Iran. However, all these efforts were in vain. With Fawzia's insistence, the Iranian authorities officially recognized the end of the royal couple's marriage on November 17, 1948. However, the Iranian officials stated that the reason for the divorce was that Iran's climate severely affected Queen Fawzia's health, and therefore Shah agreed to divorce the sister of the Egyptian king. However, one of the conditions Shah agreed to for the divorce was that their daughter, Shahnaz, had to stay in Iran and grow up there. Poor Shahnaz was left without her mother's company, and her father was busy searching for his next wife, neglecting to spend time with her. She became exceptionally lonely. At the same time, her relationship with her grandmother was not very harmonious. On one hand, Shahnaz was ignored by members of the Pahlavi family because she was not the long-awaited male heir. On the other hand, Shahnaz believed that her grandmother's unfriendly treatment of her mother led to her mother's departure. Fortunately, Shahnaz had an aunt, Shams Pahlavi, who liked her very much. She lived under the care of Aunt Shams and palace servants and attended the Barsabeh kindergarten in Tehran. Like other members of the Pahlavi family, Shahnaz received education from European teachers, most of whom were French. This was a common tradition in the Iranian court at the time. After graduating from kindergarten, a primary school was specially established for Shahnaz by the Iranian court to provide her with a good education. Her classmates were selected from the children of Iranian nobles and senior military officers. Later, at the age of eight, Shahnaz went to boarding school in Switzerland at the Mary Joseph School, where she spent five years. During this time, Shahnaz had very few opportunities to meet her father, and her father rarely visited his eldest daughter. However, Shahnaz's mother, Princess Fawzia, often went to Switzerland to accompany her, which gave Shahnaz great comfort. After completing her studies, Shah decided to send Shahnaz to the United States. There, she reunited with her aunt, Shams Pahlavi, and Queen Mother Taj Mahal. In a previous video, I introduced the story of Shah's second wife, Soraya. 
After marrying Shah on February 12, 1951, at the Marble Palace in Tehran, she became the stepmother of 10-year-old Shahnaz. Although Soraya tried her best to please Shahnaz and establish a close and friendly relationship with her, Shahnaz was influenced by her grandmother and aunt's unfriendly comments about Soraya, which left a bad impression on her. When Shahnaz was 11 years old, she was allowed by her father to spend her summer vacation in Tehran. However, during those few months, Shahnaz was not allowed to live in the palace where Shah and Soraya lived. Instead, she was arranged to live in a small house near Shah's palace. However, later on, the relationship between Shahnaz and Soraya, the stepmother and stepdaughter, improved, and Shahnaz became one of the opponents of Shah's divorce from Soraya. After Shahnaz reached adulthood, her father, Mohammad Reza Shah, arranged a political marriage for her. Shah wanted to marry his eldest daughter to King Faisal of Iraq to strengthen the political ties between Iran and Iraq. However, his wish was not fulfilled. Although Faisal was a handsome and charismatic young man and the ruler of a country, Shahnaz did not like him, nor did she want to marry him and become a sacrificial lamb in a political alliance. Fortunately, Shah respected his daughter's wishes and did not impose this marriage on her. Eventually, on October 11, 1957, when Shahnaz was 16 years old, she married a young man named Ardisher Zahidi at the Golestan Palace in Tehran. He was the son of General Fazlollah Zahidi and later served as the Iranian ambassador to the United States in the 1960s and 1970s. The wedding was small in scale. The Akala Star Banner reported at the time that the Shah had ordered it to be a simple ceremony because it is no pride to be king of a poor, hungry people. After the marriage, Shahnaz gave birth to a daughter named Manaz Zahidi. However, the couple divorced in 1964, allegedly due to Shahnaz's inability to tolerate her husband's infidelity. After divorcing her first husband, Shahnaz showed symptoms of depression. I think that Shahnaz's deteriorating mental condition was caused by various factors, including her parents' divorce during her childhood, her father's neglect, and her husband's betrayal. At this time, a young man named Khosrow Jahanbani appeared. He was the son of General Emanuela Jahanbani and was studying painting at the time, representing a typical hippie. It is said that Khosrow Jahanbani admired Shahnaz before her marriage. After Shahnaz's divorce, Khosrow became a close friend to her and tried to alleviate her mental pain by giving her LSD pills and marijuana. This also led Shahnaz to develop a drug addiction. When Shah realized the role Khosrow played in his daughter's addiction, he was extremely angry and even planned to imprison Khosrow. However, Shahnaz still decided to be with Khosrow. Later, in February 1971, Shahnaz entered into marriage once again. She had her wedding with Khosrow Jahanbani at the Iranian embassy in Paris. It is said that Shah strongly opposed his daughter's second marriage, but his opposition had no effect. Later, with the mediation of Farah Pahlavi, Shah's wife at the time, his attitude towards Shahnaz's second marriage softened, and he finally accepted and acknowledged their union. However, the condition was that they had to stay in Switzerland and not go elsewhere, and he demanded that his daughter quit drugs. Shahnaz's second marriage lasted until the death of Khosrow Jahanbani in 2014. After their marriage, the couple had a son named Kikosro and a daughter named Fawzia. In the last days of Mohammad Reza Shah's life, he divided his property among his children. Among them, Shah allocated 8% of his estate to Shahnaz and 2% to Shahnaz's daughter, Zuramanaz Sahidi. However, after Shah's death, Shahnaz learned about the distribution of her father's inheritance and realized that she received nearly 7% less than her half-sisters Faranaz and Layla. Feeling unjust, Shahnaz filed a legal lawsuit in a French court. Nevertheless, the inheritance she received was enough to allow her and her family to live comfortably and worry-free overseas, far from court conspiracies and political struggles. After the Iranian Revolution, Shahnaz Pahlavi resided in Switzerland and continues to do so until now. She also holds Swiss citizenship. Furthermore, due to Shahnaz's mother, Fawzia, being a former Egyptian princess, the Egyptian government granted Shahnaz Pahlavi Egyptian citizenship in December 2013. Shahnaz's life had both fortunate and unfortunate aspects. The unfortunate aspects include her parents' divorce during her childhood, her husband's infidelity during adulthood, her battle with depression, 
and her addiction. Although Shah named her the pride of the king, Shah has never received the attention and regard of her father and the family that she longed for, as she was not the male heir Shah had desired. Shah favored his other children much more than her. However, Shahnaz was also fortunate compared to Shah's other children, who experienced a life of exile and turmoil after the Iranian Revolution. Shahnaz always lived with her family in Switzerland, far from the struggles of politics. Her mother, who had left her during her childhood, also frequently visited her in Switzerland. This beautiful Muslim princess finally found inner peace. Sometimes fate works in mysterious ways. Closing one door but leaving a window open for a brighter future.